Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. It's Krista and today we are going to be talking about crystal habit and state of aggregation. So crystal habit is when you have well-defined crystals and they, they form in a certain way. Um, and then state of aggregation is kind of those crystals that might not form in the, the, the perfect crystal -y way, but still aggregate and form together in a similar way. Um, or in a way that's, they, uh, they grow and form in a way that's still kind of a consistent uh, character trait for the mineral. So we'll start with the crystal habits and then I'll go into the, the states of aggregation. Um, so one of the more common ones is going to be your, ooh, sorry, your prismatic. Um, and that's going to just be prism-like structures. Um, which can be similar to columnar, which I've got tourmaline in here, and that forms more like a column. So maybe the light doesn't go through it as well, or um, it doesn't have quite that that uh, prism look. It doesn't have the nice clean faces, but it forms in nice little columns. So uh, you've got also got acicular, which is needle-like. So I've got this like really delicate selenite you can see kind of the needle like crystals on that um i also have this guy here has kind of got some needle like crystals this is some some kind of zeolite i'm not 100 percent sure i bought this piece and there we go so you can see those kind of really fine needle like crystals in there I want to say this was natural light. I don't remember. If you know what this is, leave a comment. But it's got those really nice, nice needle crystals. So, um, it's our acicular or needle-like. Um, we've also got tabular, which I would probably put this one. This is also a zeolite and tabular. So you've got kind of these long, flat planes. Um, barite's a common one for this. I would probably put feldspar and the tabular, but let me know if you think that belongs somewhere else. But it's it just forms in these big long tabs, tablets, stone tablets. Um, so kind of long, long flat planes. Um, our bladed is going to be something like our kyanite here. So they form these kind of long, skinny crystals that kind of look like little blades. I would uh I would also put this gypsum in bladed. You've got long, kind of sharp, sharp ended uh blades to this gypsum. Gypsum can be a lot of different ones. So you have the needle like, the bladed, it can be I would say some of it's tabular, all kinds of things with gypsum. So next up is a fibrous, which is thread like masses, and that would be our chrysotile or our asbestos. And uh, I like to keep that in the bag because, well, asbestos. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so that's that's fibrous, and uh, and yeah. Um, next is our dendritic. So that would be like the manganese on this piece. Um, so these these black areas are dendritic. So they kind of just form like on the surface. Well, they're throughout. You can see other dendrites in there. But they kind of form in planes on the, in these flat areas on other rocks and kind of like spread out, kind of looking tree-like. A lot of people will mistake uh, dendritic mineralization as uh, like fern fossils and stuff. But that's, that's dendrites. That's a uh, crystal habit. And then you've got foliated. So like our micas, they form in those long, thin sheets. And... Uh, yeah, so you got foliation, and uh, that's their, their crystal structure of pretty much all micas. And then massive, which I would call this quartz massive. So you have the, the prismatic quartz, and we've got massive quartz. So the massive quartz just doesn't have a good crystal structure. A lot of like milky and rose quartz is going to be massive, and that is just not, not well defined. Um, and then as far as our, our uh, states of how they aggregate, there's all kinds of different ones. They could, they can aggregate in a way that's kind of granular, so it looks like you've got a whole bunch of 
uh, kind of similar sized granules or grains um, all throughout the uh, the mineral piece. And this is olivine, so that, that tends to do that. Um, you can have compact, which like this part of our flint here is uh, so tightly put together there is no, no crystal grains, um, at least here. But then you've got Druzy over here, which is another one that's kind of lots of really small, usually quartz, um, that kind of all form together, really tiny crystals that create a really nice sparkle. And that's your Druze, or your Druzy uh, mineralization there. You can have minerals that form in banded patterns, and sometimes it's all the same mineral. So like in the case of our, our agate, all the bands are all chalcedony. Um, or you can have bands that form for different minerals. So you've got uh, like a chert or a jasper, and then the banded hematite in our uh, banded iron formation here. So that would be examples of banded aggregation or formation. Um, one of the more common and uh, favorite ones is your betroidals. So I've got some nice little uh, betroidals here that are on a Utah grape grape jasper, uh, caviar jasper. I've heard it called a couple different things, but we've got little little betroidals. Here's another little little moss agate that has some betroidals inside of them. That does not want to focus. There we go, kind of right in there. Sometimes if the botroidals are really big, they're, uh, they are called mammillary. Um, but that's kind of very large botroidals get called, called, a uh, mammillary as far as the, the aggregation goes. Um, this is another one that you could call mammillary or botroidal or globular. It kind of looks like little globes. Um, I've always heard it called globular hematite, but that would fall into that category too, of the little, little bubbles, those little round spaces. But, uh, botroidal is a pretty common one, especially if you're into the agates and the jaspers and stuff. Other ways that minerals form are in, in things like geodes. So, you may have minerals that form kind of in nodules like this, and, uh, you're full of, uh, crystals on the inside. So they'll fall, form in hollow cavities. And that's that's one way that they'll they'll aggregate. And then some of my favorites are these these guys over here, these slabs. So you've got orbicular, which are you know, like little round orbs. So I've got a, a bird's eye rhyolite and leopard skin jasper. It's it's actually a rhyolite. Um, You've got all these little kind of concentric round orby guys throughout, and those are make it orbicular. Um, but not all rocks that have little round guys are orbicular, so these two are oolitic. So these are both probably limestones, they're both sedimentary. So oolitic is often in sedimentary rocks, but you could probably maybe have it in others, but um, usually it's these mineral grains that will form, um, kind of grow out from that mineral, mineral grain over time, maybe having different colors like this nice one up front here, but uh, super neat pieces there. If it's a little bit bigger, I'm not sure on this one if it's, I'm not sure on this one if it is orbicular, if it's like a rhyolite. This has, it says limestone, fossil limestone on the back. So I would probably call it piezolytic, um, with these little nodules being piezoids, which are similar to the other two. They're all concentric circles. They just kind of all form in different ways and different sizes. So, uh, these are more pea-sized concentric circles as opposed to little fish egg-sized ones there. So, uh, So uh, that is our mineral habits and, uh, you know, your crystal habits, those mineral aggregations, different ways to describe your, your mineral specimen, different ways to describe your mineral specimen. 
So this might not be the most helpful for just identifying one specific thing, but it'll help you narrow it down and describe your, your uh, finds a little bit better. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, this is the third of the mineral ID videos for the month of March for our mineral madness month. Um, if you haven't checked out the mineral madness stuff yet, and it's still March of 2022, um, I'll have a link below to the most recent March madness video and, uh, your, uh, link to go and vote on your favorite minerals. So, uh, definitely check that out. There's a giveaway associated with that. So, uh, so check that on out. And other than that, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.